Building this simple part will allow us to learn about sketches and extrusions, as well as important building features that we will regularly use such as smart dimensions and add relations. So let's start by looking at the part and coming up with an overall plan to building it in SolidWorks. Now remember that there is no one only way to build this part, meaning you can come up with many different ways to get to the final product, but the planning stage will let you come up with an efficient list of steps that you will follow to try to spend the least amount of time building it. It seems that starting with a rectangular prism would be the easiest. If we look at the circular holes and look at their side view, we notice that three of the four holes have the same depth. This suggests that we can draw all three circles at the same time and then give them the same depth to create the holes. The fourth circle seems to go all the way through, so we can draw it separately on the new surface we get and drill through. Finally, there's a narrow channel that has a different depth than the other holes and that has a fillet on both edges. We will draw the channel's side lines, cut through the material to the indicated depth, and add the fillets on both edges. So now that we have a plan in hand, we'll create a new part in SOLIDWORKS. To create a rectangular prism, we first need to understand what an extrusion does. This function, just like the word suggests, extrudes a sketch to create a solid feature. This means that we can have a circle and extrude it to make it a rod. We can extrude a ring to make it a cylinder. Or in this case, we can create a sketch of a rectangle and extrude it to make it a rectangular prism. So that's what we'll do here. Notice that we can sketch a rectangle on the front view and give it some depth on the z-axis, or we can sketch a rectangle on the top view with depth towards the y-axis, or a rectangle on the side view and give it an x-axis depth. Let's go with the first one. If we go to the Sketch tab and click on Sketch, we will be asked to select a plane on which our sketch will live. So let's choose the front plane. Now, we want for everything we draw in every sketch to be fully defined, meaning that the lines, circles, arcs, splines are all constrained by their dimensions and locations. Notice that on the bottom right corner, it reads under Defined. We'll come back to this in a second, but for now, let's create the rectangle. We can do this with lines or with the rectangle option. We'll go with the lines first. We click on lines and each time we left click, a line will be created. Notice that there are already some constraints being created depending on where we click. The tiny yellow icon tells us what the constraint is. For example, this first line will be horizontal if we click on a point where the line shows us a yellow horizontal icon. Since we want a rectangle, we do want the lines to be horizontal and vertical. So we don't click on the line if that horizontal line yellow tag isn't showing. We click on them when the yellow tag appears. Notice that the last point has two tags. The second one tells us that those points will be coincident, which of course we do want. To assign a dimension to any shape, we will use the smart dimension icon. We click on it and then on the segments of the rectangle to assign them a dimension. Looking at that front view, we see that we want the width to be 8 inches and the height to be 2. Notice that the lines of our sketch are blue and that SOLIDWORKS is telling us that the sketch is underdefined. This is because the sketch is not fully constrained. Even though the lines are in fact perpendicular and fully dimensioned, we can still move the part. To locate the part, we can use a smart dimension again to assign a distance from the origin to any of the points of the rectangle, in both the X and Y axes. Notice that when we do that, all lines are black and SOLIDWORKS says the sketch is fully defined. Another alternative is to use what we call Add Relations. Let's delete these two smart dimensions and notice that the blue lines and the underdefined are showing again and click on the drop-down menu of the Display Delete Relations button. Here we find the Add Relation option. If we want, for example, that the origin of our rectangle is located at the origin of my part, we can click on those two points, make sure that they are indeed selected on the left pane, and add the coincident relation. Since the lines are black, meaning that the sketch is fully defined, we click on either checkmark to confirm the new relation. Once we're done with the sketch, we confirm we're done with it by clicking on the return icon. We now want to extrude this rectangle into a prism. If we go to the features tab, we'll see the extruded boss base icon. 
If nothing is selected when we click on it, it'll ask us to select the plane or the sketch that we want to extrude. Of course, we want to select the sketch of the rectangle, which we can now find under the Design Trees drop-down list. If the sketch was already selected by the time we clicked on the Extruded Boss icon, we would have not been asked to select the sketch that we want to extrude, so you can do it either way. Here, we can set the depth of the extrusion. We want this dimension to be 3.5 inches, and the extrusion function shows us a preview before we click on the check mark to confirm. At this point, we can save our document. The name of our document will show an asterisk next to it when the part is not saved, so make sure to save regularly to avoid losing your work. Before continuing with the other features, let's say that we use the incorrect dimensions for this prism. You can always right-click on either the extruded boss to edit the feature, in this case the depth, or you can right-click on the sketch to edit the sketch itself. Remember from our last video that you can always look at a sketch or plane from a perpendicular view by using the Ctrl-8 hotkey combination. If we click on Edit Sketch and press Ctrl-8, we can click on any dimension to edit it and the entire prism would change. But since we did use the correct dimensions, I'm just gonna cancel the edit. And let's use Ctrl-7 to return to the isometric view. Now, we want three holes that have the same depth of 1.5 inches. We'll use the top surface as the plane to draw our sketch. Let's look at it from the top, which is either Ctrl-5 for the top view or Ctrl-8 for the view normal to that plane. And let's turn shadows off, like we learned during the last video, to not have that distraction. We want a circle somewhere over here, one on the bottom segment, and one on the bottom right corner. The diameter of the first one is 1 inch, and since the radius of the other two is 1 inch, it means that the diameters are 2 inches. We press F to fit to screen. With another smart dimension, we can locate the center of the first circle at 1.25 from the left and 1.75 from the top. Since the second circle is centered on the midpoint of the bottom segment, 4 inches away from one edge of an 8 inch segment, We'll use the add relation function we just learned about to make those two points coincident. We go to add relation, we select the center of the circle, and to select the midpoint of a segment, we right click on it and choose select midpoint. We then select the coincident option and click on the OK green checkmark. Notice that the third circle is already black, meaning fully defined, since I clicked on the corner when drawing the circle's center. Since the entire sketch is fully defined, we exit the sketch, we select it so that we don't have to select it again in just a second, press Ctrl-7 for isometric view, and we go to the Features tab and click on the Extruded Cut. This feature works similarly to Extruded Boss, except this one will create holes instead of Extruded Bosses. The depth we want for these holes is 1.5 inches. Let's create the additional smaller hole now. We create a sketch on the bottom surface of the semicircle hole. We draw a circle that is centered on the center of the larger circle. Notice the coincident yellow label. We give it its 1 inch diameter dimension. Exit the sketch after checking it's fully defined. And select it to create an extruded cut. In this case, we won't blindly assign it a depth. This time we choose the option Through All, since it just needs to cut through the rest of the prism. Click OK, and now all we need is the diagonal channel. Of course, for this channel, we will create a new sketch that is located on the top surface. With the Line option, we sketch a random quadrilateral that touches the bottom and top segments. Notice that the double segments only show because there's two fillets at the bottom, those rounded edges. The outer lines are the ones that are going to give us the location of the outer cut, and the interior ones will be generated when we add the fillets. Because of this, we want the bottom left corner of the quadrilateral to be at 0.5 inches from the left, the bottom right corner to be at 1.5 inches, and the diagonal lines to be parallel, which we can do by going to Add Relation, selecting the two segments, and choosing Parallel. Notice that the diagonals are still blue. This is because we can still change their angle while maintaining the other restrictions. We can fully define this parallelogram by setting the 30 degree angle, which we do by using Smart Dimension and selecting one diagonal and the horizontal segment. Now that it's fully defined in black, we exit the sketch, check if it's selected, or select it if it's not, select Extruded Cut, 
press Ctrl-7 to return to isometric for a better picture, and type 1.2 inches of depth. Finally, we use the fillet command. Making sure that no sketch is selected, we click on fillet, and it'll ask us what edges we want to add fillets to. We select the two edges at the bottom, type the 0.1 inches radius of the fillets, and click OK. Notice the asterisk next to our part name. That's because we haven't saved in a while. Since we're done with our part, we can save it again by using Ctrl S. Notice that the asterisk disappears when our current part is saved. The last thing we'll do with our part is to assign it a material. Let's say our part drawings indicate that our part is made of 1020 steel cold rolled. To do this, we right click on the material, select Edit Material, choose the 1020 from our list, and click Apply. We can go to the Evaluate tab and use, for example, Mass Properties. Because we've assigned the material to the part, we can not just see the center of mass relative to our origin, but the weight. This is only possible if we know the density, which is given, of course, by the material we selected. So in this video, we learned about sketch and planes, smart dimensions, black and blue lines, for fully defined and underdefined sketches, add relations, extrusion bosses and extrusion cuts, editing existing extrusions or sketches, saving documents, adding fillets, and assigning materials. The links to the other videos of this SOLIDWORKS course, as well as the lectures to other engineering courses, are linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching.